Okay, so in this video, we're gonna take a look at the installation of Git, and as I've mentioned, the GitHub desktop client. So this is the first way that we can get the setup. There's one thing I forgot to actually load, and that is going to be, if you haven't done this before at all, then you will need to head over to the GitHub website. And as always, I'll provide all of the links that I mention in this video in the section below. So the first thing you'll actually want to do if you haven't done this before, like I mentioned, is head over to github.com. Now, when you're here, you want to sign up. It's completely free to sign up, but you will need this account to link with the applications that we'll be downloading in just a moment. So this is gonna be fairly simple and obvious how to do. Uh, do remember the username that you choose and the email, because again, these are gonna be the things that we link in just a moment. Uh, when you've headed to github.com though and signed up, then we'll move on to the next step. So the next thing we want to do is navigate to this website and that is git scm. This is going to be some background software that we need just to get everything synced up with the accounts. And this is gonna be helpful as well if you want the integration with the Unreal Engine. So this is quite simple. The, uh, the website is not something that I like design-wise. The download button is actually here inside of this screen, which is weird, uh, but simply press download and choose the version that you need. Now I'm gonna cancel this because I've got all of this downloaded already, uh, but I haven't installed it yet. So I will be installing this with you as we go through so that nothing is missed out, but I just have everything already downloaded. Okay, so when your file's downloaded and you launch this, you should be greeted with something looking like this. And we can just go next on a lot of these pages. Now you can choose where you install this. I tend to move all of mine to a project files section on my D drive. A lot of this doesn't need to be run very quickly. So I put it on my external, on my hard disk drive, which doesn't obviously run quite as fast as my main drive, but that is fine. You choose where you want to put this and then we can pretty much just next through all of this. Nothing malicious or dangerous is gonna be installed and we don't need to change any of the default options. So we can just hit next. All of these are the recommended options and generally they're perfectly fine. So I'm keeping these on screen just so you can check if yours is showing something different. Uh, but like I said, I keep all of these at their default and that is gonna be perfectly fine for how we want to use this. Now, once you've made all those choices, just hit install and this will do everything for you. Again, I'll come back when this has finished doing its thing because there's nothing that I need to show. Okay, so that is everything done. That has finished installing. All you need to do is untick that unless you wanted to view the release notes and then hit finish. So that's the first part of this done. That is the, the Git system on our system installed now. So this will give us access to things like the console commands if we wanted to run this through something like CMD. Now, we're not gonna do that just yet. The next thing that we want to do is navigate to the next web page, which is git lfs. This is for large file sizes or large file storage, I think. Uh, yeah, it says it just there. Uh, and this is just gonna be very useful for things like audio files and some of the models and things that you'll be bringing into most game projects. So this is going to be very important. It shows you here, in fact, uh, code and things are in gray. They're not gonna be that big. If you're adding things in like images, especially PSD files, then this is why you're gonna want this. So again, download this, I've done that already. And once you have that downloaded, we're just going to hit the executable file. Okay, so again, with the executable launched, you should have something looking like this. We will have to accept the user agreements. And like for the last one, we can put this in any location that we want. I'm gonna put this on the D drive again. And likewise, all of the default settings are fine. We don't need to look into any of the options. Very quick installation and we can hit finish and that is ready to go. Now, the next thing you want to do is open up where you've installed the original Git, or you can just hit the Windows button and type Git bash, which is something we installed from the previous section and load the git bash application. Now the git bash will open this. And what we want to do is just to initialize the LFS that we installed. We can see we actually have that command down here for the initialization. So we can grab over all of this, get the git LFS install. If we hit control C, we'll go back in to the git bash. And a very simple way to do this is to hit shift and insert. If you're not familiar with these, control V doesn't work. So shift and insert, we'll copy that in, hit enter, and it will say that git LFS is initialized. So now whenever we use the GitHub extension, which we're gonna download next, uh, it will be ready to work with large files. And that is the final thing. We're gonna move over now to desktop dot github so this is the final step you'll need to again hit the download button and navigate to where that has downloaded and of course run the executable okay now this is the important thing like i mentioned you need to have your account already set up if you wanted all of this to sync pretty much automatically in the future so rather than skipping this step uh hopefully you don't need to hit this button here which is the create your free account hopefully you did that previously when i mentioned so we're going to go into sign into github 
simply enter the username that you set up or the email address and the password that you gave the previous website in this video. With that done, hit sign in. You'll be taken to this page. This is just gonna ask you for an alias that you'd like to go by inside of the desktop application. And again, just to reconfirm your email address. Once you've done that, hit the continue button. And then you've got the option to help submit the uh, anonymous data if you wanted to improve the, the application, which should be fine. So I'm just going to okay that. So with that done, you now have the Git desktop application installed. The only thing I tend to do is I will normally go into my view and this is optional. Uh, in fact, it's the options. And I've just started liking a lot of my applications to be the dark theme. They all just seem to go together. It's in the beta. And I've just done that because if you ever see me working with this in the future, uh, it's going to be in dark from here on out. So you might wonder how that was done. So the final thing we need to do is to get a project working with this application. And as you might have guessed, to do that, we're going to have to launch the Unreal Engine. And I'm just going to create a brand new project from scratch. I'm going to make it an empty project and I'll be making it a blueprint project just because it's faster to install. So if you do something similar, again, I'll pause this whilst it's creating the new project and then we'll be right back. Okay, so I'm in the new project. I've just called this YouTube underscore Git, as we can see up here. It's using 4.2, but again, all of this isn't gonna make a difference. Um, and it's a completely blank project, which is gonna be useful just so we can see how things are synced uh, when we add new things into the project. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna do this in what I think most people are gonna to wanna to use if you're using Git, because there's the option for this. And that is to use this source control option here so that we can link this directly with our Git applications so that whenever we make changes inside of the engine, we have the option to just hit the commit button and that will all be saved immediately. Otherwise, you'd normally have to bring up the desktop GitHub client that we've just installed and do it through there. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, it, it can be useful. So I appreciate that a lot of people will want to use it this way. So to do this, we're gonna hit the source control. We're gonna to connect to source control and we're gonna change this from none to Git. And as I mentioned in the previous video, uh, this does currently state it's in beta version, but I haven't had any problems with this. So hopefully we should be fine to use it this way. Now, I believe if you left your installation in the standard folder, the C drive, it may know where this is, but as I didn't, uh, we just need to navigate to that and find the project file location. So remember where you installed Git and navigate there now. Okay, now the important thing to pay attention to when you find this, it will be in the main folder that you've installed this to. It's gonna be in the bin folder and we're looking specifically for the git.exe, so not the bash or the sh. So link that up and like I mentioned, if you had the account and everything ready and you followed everything step by step as I've done, it will automatically know the username that you've given this in the desktop application, which is why we signed that in first, and the email address that you've provided. Uh, with that done, we can allow this to add an automatic git ignore file and make an initial git commit. Now, if you're not familiar with this, all this is doing, the git ignore file is actually really, really useful. Uh, this is a file with some text in it, which is going to say what is and isn't going to be tracked when you submit things. Keeping in mind, if you're not aware that things like the saved folder, the intermediate folder, um, and even the config aren't necessarily needed in all projects, especially when you're giving it to someone else, uh, because these folders can be automatically recompiled on the launching of the project. They can also be some of the folders which actually take up the most space. So because these can just be rebuilt and uh, compiled on the fly when you load the project, you don't need to track things like that in GitHub. So this is going to keep your project size down online and stop you reaching the data limit so quickly. So that's what the git ignore files are for. And we can take a look at those after and I'll show you where it gets generated. And the initial commit, this is just going to be the first commit that gets pushed to the application with the first bit of information, which in this case is going to be the blank project. So if we initialize the project with Git and accept the settings, then we can see that's all gone through. We've got all the ticks we wanted down there. And that is now linked with the Git application. So the first thing to do is if we go back to the content folder, I'm just going to right click on this and show in Explorer so that we can find this quickly. Uh, we'll go back one step and we can see here we now have a file which has no name and this is our git ignore. These files don't have a name and if we click into it, it is of type git ignore. And I'm just going to open this with sublime text. You can use something like notepad or whatever you have installed. It should be human readable It'll come up in a normal uh, text format. And we can see here the things that it's ignoring are exactly what I mentioned previously. So we've got our saved file, our intermediate folder, uh, folder, sorry, the binaries, and a few other things that again, don't need to be tracked in any of the projects. So it creates one of these for us automatically, which is really handy uh, because previously what we would have needed to have done is find something online, like a nice template for these. 
So these are all the things which aren't going to be tracked to save us space. Uh, we can see this is now a git tracked project because if you have the show hidden folders turned on, then we can see the got the dot git folder, which is what shows us this is being tracked through an application somewhere. And then the very final step is going to be adding this to our desktop client. So if we just navigate back to the desktop client, you should hopefully still have this open. You can see here that we currently have no repositories on the client, which is fine. All we want to do is to add a local repository. So we've got three different options. We have create new repository. So if we hadn't done all of this through the Unreal Engine, this will take a folder and this would have placed that .git folder inside of it. Uh, and then that would have been another way to create a, a clean brand new repository. The clone option is if you have one already stored online, so if you've done this in the past, you've created a repository, you have that on your GitHub account, then you can clone that to your PC using the clone option. So that will just download everything and store it as a repository. And the final option is the one we're going to use now is we're going to add a repository that exists locally to this client. So we can find that by navigating to wherever you've installed this. It needs to be the folder, the, the root folder with the .git inside of it. When you find that, then just hit the select folder, add repository, and we can see we now have the repository here. So we can publish this, and this will push this to the GitHub website and uh, make sure that you untick the keep private because as I mentioned, I'm currently not paying for this. And if you don't have the paid subscription, you can only have public repositories. So if you push that, it will take everything we've done so far and push that to the website. And just to, to show what happened, well, if we hit the history button, we can see that it's included the, the project, uh, everything that is gonna be needed inside of the project, the git ignore, and it has the text initial commit. And if you remember, when we hit the initialize on the source button up here, uh, it did have the word initial commit there, and that's just the text that you give it to say what, to kind of describe what was happening. The alternative way to do this is say you've made some changes in the engine. So we can come down here, we can add a new folder, and we'll call this blueprints. Inside of this, we will add a blueprint class and we'll just call this actor and we'll call this BP underscore actor. Now we can see that this has been added by this uh, plus sign here. So that's ready to be added to the repository. And we've got two ways that we can add this when we now know that we want to track this. So we can go to our source control button and we can submit to source control, but we've already kind of seen how that works. So I'm just gonna load up the desktop client so that I can show you the other way that we can add this. So the summary is exactly what this is. The initial commit is the summary. So we need to type this in and we'll just say that this is the uh, new assets added. In fact, I'll just say that's the new test assets added. We commit that to master. And then if we push this to the origin, again, this is gonna push everything that we've just done up to the server. So we now have everything stored. So again, if we go now back over to the history, we now have the second commit that we have, which is the new test assets added. You tend to want to make this slightly more descriptive so it helps you track and down bugs. Say you're adding a whole new feature into the project and something broke it, you can go back through uh, some well-documented commits and you can say, right, okay, this is when we added in the double jump and now jumping doesn't work at all. You can revert back to that and see what it, what it is that's been changed and try and fix it. So this is again, another really good reason to use these. But yeah, that's how you would use and make commits through the desktop application. If you didn't want to use everything automatically this way, uh, like I said, otherwise you just hit the submit, type the same thing in there what's happened uh, and the details and you're ready to go okay and the final thing before we wrap this up we are getting there is to check that all of this has worked over on github so go back to the same link i gave you previously make sure that you signed in and you can see your list of repositories on the main page now some of these are the things i've worked on but this is the important one we're going to go to youtube underscore git and what we should be expecting to see are our two commits so we can already see in fact we've got the git ignore the config file and the blueprints folder inside of the blueprints folder we've got that one actor that we've created and we can see if we go back here we have our two commits as well. So we can see what they were and they sync up perfectly, which is the initial commit and the new test assets added. So that has all worked. Uh, we've got everything that we've tested and the project is now secure and backed up somewhere online for us to access. So that's the basics of getting the GitHub option set up. So as I said, we've covered GitHub, uh, the Git client and the desktop client and integrating this directly with Unreal. So hopefully you've seen all of the different ways that you can integrate Git with your projects. And like I mentioned, now that you've got that signed up uh, with the account and the basics installed to your system, super easy to set up. We've got past the stage where you would have had to have 
been writing a lot of console commands to get all of this to sync up and added into your project. So it's very, very simple. And now, now that you know how to do this, it'll probably take you a few minutes in the future for any future projects and it's definitely worth doing. So I'll leave that video here. As always, if you've enjoyed the video or find it useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That always helps. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.